A liturgical eulogy for this feast gives us three reasons for this feast. The first reason is the giving of the rosary by the Blessed Virgin Mary to St. Dominic. The second reason is the Battle of Lepanto, the great victory achieved there by the praying of the rosary. And the third reason is the triumph over the Turks uh, in the year 1716. And where did that happen? It happened on August 5th, 1716. And where did that happen? Hmm, someplace else. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. First, uh, let us look at the reception of the Blessed of the Rosary by St. Dominic. And here I'm reading from The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort. The Second Rose. Now, St. Louis de Montfort tells us that since the Holy Rosary is composed principally and in substance of the prayer of Christ and the angelic salutation, that is, the Our Father and the Hail Mary, it was without doubt the first prayer and the first devotion of the faithful and has been in use all through the centuries from the time of the apostles and disciples down to the present. But it was only in the year 1214, however, that Holy Mother Church received the rosary in its present form and according to the method we use today. It was given to the church by St. Dominic who had received it from the Blessed Virgin as a powerful means of converting the Albigensians and other sinners. I will tell you the story of how he received it, which is found in the very well-known book De Dignitate Salterii by Blessed Alan de la Roche. Now St. Dominic, Seeing that the gravity of people's sins was hindering the conversion of the Albigensians, withdrew into a forest near Toulouse, where he prayed unceasingly for three days and three nights. During this time he did nothing but weep and do harsh penances in order to appease the anger of Almighty God. He used his discipline so much that his body was lacerated and finally he fell into a coma. At this point, Our Lady appeared to him, accompanied by three angels, and she said, Dear Dominic, do you know which weapon the Blessed Trinity wants to use to reform the world? Oh, my Lady, answered Saint Dominic, you know far better than I do, because next to your Son, Jesus Christ, you have always been the chief instrument of our salvation. Then Our Lady replied, I want you to know that in this kind of warfare, the battering, battering ram has always been the angelic psalter, which is the foundation stone of the New Testament. Therefore, if you want to reach these hardened souls and win them over to God, preach my psalter. So he arose, comforted and burning with zeal for the conversion of the people in that district, he made straight for the cathedral. At once, unseen angels rang the bells to gather the people together and St. Dominic began to preach. At the very beginning of his sermon, an appalling storm broke out. The earth shook, the sun was darkened, and there was so much thunder and lightning that all were very much afraid. Even greater was their fear when looking at a picture of Our Lady exposed in a prominent place. They saw her raise her arms to heaven three times to call down God's vengeance upon them if they failed to be converted to amend their lives and seek the protection of the Holy Mother of God. Now God wished, by means of these supernatural phenomena, to spread the new devotion of the Holy Rosary and to make it more widely known. At last, at the prayer of St. Dominic, the storm came to an end and he went on preaching. So fervently and compellingly did he explain the importance and value of the Holy Rosary that almost all the people of Toulouse embraced it and renounced their false beliefs. In a very short time, a great improvement was seen in the town. People began leading Christian lives and gave up their former bad habits. And there we have the second rose in a series of many uh, short accounts here of the spreading of the Holy Rosary and the forming of the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. And all this can be found in The Secret of the Rosary by St. Louis de Montfort.
which, by the way, I highly recommend for your reading. Now, let's take a look at the second reason, reason for this feast, and we find this in the fifth lesson from Matins for this feast. From this holy devotion, countless benefits have been showered, the length and breadth of Christendom. Among these most certainly can be reckoned that famous victory which the Christian princes aroused by the plea of Pope Pius V, won over the vastly superior power of the Turks at Lepanto. At this victory, as this victory was won on the very day on which the confraternities of the Most Holy Rosary throughout the world were offering up their rosaries, as they had been asked to do, there can be no doubt that this victory was an answer to their prayers, and so convinced of this was Gregory the Thirteenth, that he proclaimed for so singular a blessing there should be offered everywhere on earth perpetual thanks to the Blessed Virgin under the title of the Rosary. Now that's the second reason then for this feast. Now the third reason is this. Clement XI firmly held to the opinion that other famous victories must be attributed to the intercession of the Blessed Virgin. In 1716, Charles VI, the emperor-elect of the Romans, won a tremendous triumph in the kingdom of Hungary over an overwhelming army of Turks on the very day on which the feast of the dedication of the Basilica of Our Lady of Snows was being celebrated. So that feast is on August 5th. Indeed, almost at the very moment of battle, the confraternity of the Most Holy Rosary was offering up public and solemn prayer in the Eternal City in Rome. An immense number of people took part in this demonstration, and they poured forth with great devotion fervent prayers to God for the overthrow of the Turks. They implored the powerful intercession of the Virgin Mother of God for the help of Christians. In view of this victory, as well as of the raising of the siege of the island of Corcyra, which followed almost immediately, Clement made this decree, that the memory of these extraordinary favors might be perpetuated forever, that the faithful might be thankful forever, Clement extended the observant of the Feast of the Most Holy Rosary to the Universal Church. And the story continues. Now, we should not doubt that these battles were won, but we have to understand that it continues even today. And we won't always know how Our Lady is interceding, but we can trust that she is. Now, it is said, it is said that the Cuban Missile Crisis was averted by means of of prayer and uh, consecration to Mary. It is said also the nuclear war, which had been predicted and uh, prophesied by, uh, by the Blessed Virgin Mary in more than one apparition, that nuclear war was averted in 1984 by means of the Pope's consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Now, even the, and the controversial part is that the Pope did not do so according to, uh, according to how the Blessed Virgin asked for it to be done, but nevertheless, it was enough to avert nuclear war. It wasn't enough to bring about an era of peace and the triumph of the Immaculate Heart, but it was enough to avert nuclear war. Now, some of you might not know that in 1956, there was a rosary crusade held in the Multnomah, Multnomah Civic Stadium, which is now the Timbers Stadium over there in southwest Portland, uh, in October of 1956 with Father Patrick Payton. And 23,000 people gathered there in the baseball stadium to pray the rosary as part of a rosary crusade. I know this from reading the history of this parish because it was Father uh, Carmody a uh, former pastor of this parish who was responsible. Uh, he was the general chairman for this event. But I also know this because my mother attended uh, with her dad, my grandfather, uh, for that Rosary Crusade in 1956. Now, we don't know what that averted. We don't know how we were saved by means of those 23,000 people who prayed the rosary in the baseball stadium here in Portland. But we can trust, 
we can trust that good things came of that and some sort of harm was averted by means of that prayer. Now I say this because people are worried about all sorts of things happening in the world today. People are worried about all sorts of things and troubled and filled even with anxiety and fear. But we need to trust that if the praying of the rosary has averted such disasters in the past, certainly it would continue to do so today. All the more reason to be devoted to your daily rosary. All the more reason for you to pray the rosary every day with your family if possible. Also keeping in mind that you can gain a plenary indulgence on any day. One every day by the public praying of the rosary. Whether with other people in the church or with your family at home or even just with another person out loud. You can gain a plenary indulgence every day for the praying of the Holy Rosary. Now, it is the Dominican Rosary in particular for which this indulgence is offered. There are other rosaries. There's the Servite Rosary, the Chaplet of Sorrows. There's the Franciscan Rosary, the Brigitine Rosary, and other chaplets. But it is the Dominican Rosary alone that is given this plenary indulgence every day. We need to trust that if it is that powerful, then we should always pray it. Now, Our Lady told St. Dominic that priests who preach on the rosary will experience great fruitfulness from their preaching. Now, I will never know what that fruitfulness is, what that fruitfulness is and God may very well never show me, but I can trust that it is happening. I can trust now, it may be that by my preaching of the Holy Rosary that someone nearby or someone actually listening here in the church will benefit from that. It may also be likely that nobody here, well, of course, you'll benefit from it, but it may very well be likely that my preaching of the Holy Rosary will benefit someone that I will never see and someone who will never know or see me. It may be that my preaching of the rosary may benefit someone, may bring about a great fruitfulness, fruitfulness several miles away from here in another parish. It may happen that it is uh, across the world somewhere. As God chooses and as the Blessed Virgin Mary intercedes. But even so, I trust that my preaching of the Holy Rosary will bring about a great fruitfulness the salvation of souls, the turning of a corner of a hardened sinner. You just never know. And so it is with your own praying of the rosary. You may not see the results of it, although I would guess you likely will, but you won't see the extent of the results of your praying the rosary. There will be benefits that you are never aware of there will be people who benefit, souls converted, that you may never be aware of. And that is because we need faith. Faith is believing in those things which cannot be seen. If we could see everything, well, we wouldn't need faith. So we need to pray not knowing whether it will bear fruit, but trusting that it will. And that is what, that's, that's, that's where there's merit involved. That you pray trusting in God, even if you don't see any results. It's that way with all of our prayer. If, if God obviously answered all of our prayers immediately, just as we asked for them, well, we would lose faith. Actually, everything would just be so present to us. We wouldn't we wouldn't need faith and trust in God. But if, if it's unclear to us whether, whether God is answering our prayers, or if we have to pray and pray and pray before they will happen, before we will get a confirmation of the answer of our prayer, well, then that's how we grow in faith and trust in God. We may have to pray a very long time before 
before we understand that our prayer has been answered. But God knows what is good for us, and God knows that we need to have habitual prayer in order to grow in our faith and trust in Him, and that it's good for our sanctification as well. Now, Our Lady brought about the end of the Albigensian heresy by means of the praying of the Holy Rosary. Our Lady brought about the saving from uh, disastrous uh, conquests against Christians by the means of the praying of the Holy Rosary. And who knows what else Our Lady has, has saved us from by means of the praying of the Holy Rosary. Well, that is what this feast is really all about. I want to encourage you, if you're not praying the Holy Rosary, to pray five decades every day. If you're already praying five decades every day, I want to encourage you to pray 15 decades every day, to pray the whole Rosary, all 15 decades. And what you'll find is when you pray them in succession, the whole life, death, and resurrection of Christ and the glorification of the saints becomes present to you. Your meditation on the, on the mysteries of the rosary will happen more naturally because you start at the beginning and you go all the way through. So I want to encourage you, if you're not already doing so, uh, to start doing that. Well, perhaps you pray five mysteries in the morning, five in the, in the daytime, and five in the evening. Or maybe you pray them all at once. If you have a, a substantial commute, you can get done all 15 mysteries in about an hour. Can you not spend an hour with the Lord? What do you do for your prayer? Do you have a regular prayer life at all? Well, this would be an ideal way of sanctifying your day. But I will leave that to you for your merit and encourage you to do so. Domine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.